Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to get your car ready for a smog check if you need one. Uh, first thing you want to do is you want to get an OBD2 scanner. So go ahead and plug that into your car. My car is, that's where the scanner is. It's usually in the driver footwell somewhere. So plug it in. Then what you want to do is turn your car onto the on position. And then we can get the test going. So go ahead and push enter and it'll scan and do its thing. It's going to take probably about 30 seconds to get through this. And so basically the reason why you want to do this is because this is pretty much the guaranteed way you know you're going to pass smog because this is because of the way they do the smog checks now. Um, if you do this, then you just you know that it's going to be ready. And if it's not, you can, it'll tell you what you need to get fixed to get ready. So once it's done reading, go to, go to IM on the menu, which is inspection monitors, which is exactly what they use uh, when they're doing the smog check. This is all they do. They just read this. So mill is the check engine, and then go ahead and scroll through these. Um, see so yeah, how you can say these might all say ready or NA, which is fine. Don't worry about it. So if yours is not ready, or say maybe you disconnected the battery or something, then a lot of these monitors aren't going to be ready, and you're going to need to do a drive cycle to get your car ready for a smog. So I'm going to show you how to do that next. So basically why I mentioned the disconnecting the battery is back in the day, you used to be able to disconnect your battery if you had like a check engine light and then reset it. And then you could take it into the smog like immediately and you'd be able to pass. Well, because now cars are newer, uh, they now use the OBD, OBD2 technology to basically do the smog check. So all they basically do is they take a scanner just like yours that you, if you have one, I have a link in the description for it. They plug it in. If all the monitors are ready, then they just pass you for smog because they know the car is looking at all the monitors and nothing is broken or malfunctioning. So they basically just use that data. And if it's all good, then basically they just go, okay, cool. Your car is good to go. All the smog stuff is, stuff is working and you pass smog. So this is why you can't disconnect the battery anymore. And also if you disconnect the battery and you drive it around just a little bit and then you try and take it into for a smog, some of the monitors aren't going to be ready. Uh, you need to drive around for a little bit to and do these certain things to basically make sure that all the monitors have been tested and are ready for a smog. So basically the way you can fix this uh, very quickly without driving hundreds of miles is to, a, is to do a drive cycle, like I mentioned. So basically I'm going to show you how to do that now. So this particular drive cycle is geared specifically towards Hondas and Acuras, but if you do this drive cycle on any car, it should be pretty similar and it should be able to, you know, test all the monitors and you should be good to go. So the first thing you want to do is make sure your car is cold and it hasn't been driven and make sure that you've got between three quarters and a quarter tank of gas. Then what you want to do is you want to let the car idle. So basically turn the car on. You want to sit, want to let it sit there for two and a half minutes, and you also want to have the AC on full blast with the rear defroster on. So what that does is that ECU will run, ECU will run the oxygen sensor heat self test. It'll run the air injection system passive air test, the EVAP purge test, and the misfire detection test. And so that's just part of it. So let it sit there for two and a half minutes and basically don't do anything. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and turn off the AC and then you want to drive the car, get it to the freeway as fast as you can. Um, and basically what you want to do is you want to drive the car at 55 miles an hour at half throttle. Um, and so when you do this drive cycle on the freeway, especially try and do it in the morning or late at night because it's kind of dangerous the way you have to do this with you know the regular flow of traffic because you have to drive the car kind of slow on the freeway and then you also have to slow it down quite a bit. So just try and do it when there's not as many cars on the road. So what you wanna do is get on the freeway, go 55 miles an hour at half throttle. And basically during this time, the ECU will run self tests on the misfire detection, the fuel trim and the EVAP purge test. So basically you wanna hold 55 miles an hour for three minutes and the diagnosis will perform uh, the O2 response test, the air intrusive system test, EGR flow test, purge valve test, and the misfire detection and fuel trim test. So all that stuff happens when you drive 55 miles an hour for three minutes. Once you've done that three minutes, you can do a little longer if you want. It doesn't have to be exactly three minutes. But once you've done that, then what you want to do is let off the pedal. Don't switch gears, just let off the gas pedal and let the car coast all the way down to 20 miles an hour. So 
And as you can see, you should, probably shouldn't be going 20 miles an hour on the freeway. So that's why you want to do it when there's not a lot of cars around. You don't want to brake and don't shift gears. And what the ECU would do at this point is it's going to do an EGR flow test, a purge valve test, and a fuel trim test. So once you've gone all the way down to 20 miles an hour, then just basically you want to get back up to 55 miles an hour and you want to hold that for five minutes. Uh, you want to, this time, instead of doing half throttle, you want to do three quarters throttle um, until you can get up to 55. So you want to try and get up to 55 miles an hour as fast as you can. So basically what happens this next go around is ECU will now perform a catalytic monitor diagnostic test. Um, so if your cat is marginal or kind of old, th this test may not like trigger or may not work as well the first time. So uh, you might have to do this drive cycle a couple of times to get the cat monitor to be ready for a smog check. So just keep that in mind. That's why you want the OBD2, OBD2 sensor. So that way you just drive around a couple miles you do the drive cycle and then you can test it with the, the scanner to see if it's ready to go or not. And if it's ready to go the first time, you're good to go. And then you don't have to do anything. If it's not, then you want to repeat this test. Uh, keep repeating it until all the monitors are ready to go. So once all the monitors are ready to go, then you know you're gonna you're good to go for a smog. You can take the car into us to get your smog and it should pass without any issues because you've already basically done all the tests that the smog station will do. So that's how you basically will pass a smog. Um, it's not really that hard, but you you know you obviously got to make sure that you have the right techniques in this drive cycle and the right gear, which is the scanner, to make sure everything is good to go. And then you won't have any issues or headaches when you actually take the car into smog. So I hope that was helpful. Let me know if it was in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.